Hello everyone, I'm Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and we are only five videos into this project. This is the sixth one and it's still very easy to follow along from the beginning. So if you've been meaning to learn Python or know anyone who should, this is the time to bring them in. So when last we left off, I created a dictionary of dictionaries, made it persistent on the hard drive, and are stepping through it. There's already a lot about this foundational work that I want to fix to make sure the course is exactly correct going forward for what I want. And the first is that since I am documenting so many things with YouTube videos, I actually want to embed the URLs of those videos right in to the code. So over here, I'm going to start with the first creation of a dict object, copy link address. And uh, I guess that kind of goes in here. first dict. And then uh, the next thing we did is turn, turn it into a dictionary of dictionaries. and then added the shell object for persistence. Now, I'll actually probably end up deleting these comments out as we go, but the important thing is that they will be embedded into the repository, so as people step through the history of the project, they will find the uh, YouTube uh, video URLs, and then only the important ones will sort of get left around as, as a residue in the main uh, code. So that is a good time to uh, drop out for a uh, git commit am added YouTube URLs git push exit and the next thing I want to do is turn this into a function so that we start to contain scopes we don't want global uh, variable scopes uh, leaking out around and just to you know illustrate that fact to people who are learning Python with this project things are read from top to bottom so there's a very sort of contrary thing going on where you're tempted to put your main body up at the top so that when you load your text file you look at it you can follow the program flow very easily but the fact is, all the dependencies might not have been encountered and loaded into memory until you get to the very bottom of the file. Luckily, there's a convention for handling this in Python. It's a little different from other languages, but this is what it looks like. If name, no, it's a special internal variable. Whenever you have these internal variables, they're underscore, underscore, and then their name, which happens to be in this case name, equals equals. The equals are always double uh, for uh, checking equality. That's as opposed to assignment of values to variables, which would be a single equals. And we are actually looking for underscore underscore main. So the name of the code block that we're in is main, which is the outer one, nothing contained in functions. We put a colon after that. 
And then what we do is we call the function called main. And what do you think we do after that? Mm -hmm. Oops. Ah. Shift O. Def main. Open, close, colon. Shift V. Everything indents. And that's all the containing that you need to do in order to get it into uh, uh, the same code block. So now we should be able to save that, drop out to a shell, Python the file, and have the exact same output. So as you can see, all we did is we converted the program flow to where it literally executed from the top down as it, as it encountered stuff. So previously, it imported shell, it went through all of this, and then it did the print output when it got to the bottom. Um, and all the dependencies were built up properly, but that's bad form. Uh, you shouldn't have too much outside at that top level scope because it creates global variables and potential memory bloat issues. And it hasn't even encountered anything it might have needed it to encounter until it gets to the bottom. So now we can always read the main body of the program at the top of the file the moment we load it in a function called main and know that main is not invoked until it gets to the very bottom of the file. This is a Python convention. Uh, it, the way these issues are handled in different languages varies but it's good to understand this pattern right at the outset when learning Python because you're going to encounter it a lot. This is one function and then one call to a function wrapped inside a conditional at the bottom of the body of the program. Well, thanks for joining me. Please share and don't forget to subscribe.